Up on the workbench today I have this Sharp LCD and we appear to have a timing problem as you can see any video coming in and the menus are all badly distorted and we have this line up at the side of the screen here as well on the left side the entire screen has this shimmy to it so that's the one we're going to look at today this sets out you got a bit of a damaged screen the guy that brought it to me it kind of uh, had a little owie in his uh, truck anyway that's the uh, that's one we're going to look at today see if we can get to the bottom of this problem with the display it appears to be a timing type problem it could be our T-Con we won't know until we get it apart see what's going on with it this one's a Sharp LC52D82 and that would make it a 52 inch LCD TV it's a Mexican made one and I'm just looking to see if there's a date on here I don't see a date that this thing's made but uh, this one's a few years old look at the power consumption of this right 322 watts huge huge number by today's standards this is going to be a, a backlit uh, LCD that uses conventional fluorescent, cold cathode fluorescent uh, lamps. Some people call them neon lamps because they operate very similar to how a neon lamp operates. There's no heated cathode. Anyway, let's get the back off this uh, monster and uh, see if we can see what's going on with it. So I've removed the the brackets that mount the wall mount bracket. I'm just now in the process of removing the shield screws. I want to be able to take the shield cover off so I can look at the boards and even power the setup before I remove the boards. See if I can localize the problem on one of the boards underneath these shields here. It looks like we have a, a connection problem just from the very fact that I can tap the set just on the back panel here and it'll really make a difference in the picture. I had it perfect at one point when the camera wasn't running. I tapped it and the picture came absolutely perfect. I tapped it again and it went bad, like you're seeing. A dozen screws later, and a couple of shields, and now we are revealing our different boards on this television. So what we have is we have our analog input board here with our AV inputs, our component and composite inputs, and our audio inputs. The tuner is on this board here. This is the digital board with the HDMI inputs and the signal processing. This is our low voltage differential signaling cabling here. It goes to this little board. This is the timing controller. And looks like there's two sets of controllers on here. There's one in behind, and then they're connected by these two ribbon cables. And then somehow the other cables, they must feed up behind here and onto this backboard. Anyway, we've got it taken down to this point. We'll try to localize by tapping on the various boards see if I can localize which one's causing the fault. Well I removed the one of the signal boards here this one plugs into the, the, the timing controller here which plugs into the panel but take a look at this one here we may have a bit of a problem here the heat transfer gel that's normally this is like a, like a, like a sticky like a, a heat transferring gel like you find on some of the plasmas has actually melted on this processor IC and it's actually running down the board so we may have a, a, a problem with this IC here I'm going to scrape all this off and put some new heat transfer gel in there just to uh, keep that chip cool and then we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there so as I continue to test what I've been able to do is just unplug the uh, interface connectors between the T-Con board and the display driver um, how it works is the signal comes in from the main board goes into this video board here this is one of the T-Con timing controllers you got a top half and a bottom half driver so this top this drives the top half of the screen this drives the bottom half of the screen and I'll show you what happens when I unplug those plugs so if I unplug the bottom portion of the plug you'll see that the bottom portion of the picture is going to freeze. If I change inputs, for example, the bottom portion of the picture will stay. 
because we're not sending any data to the bottom portion of the picture. So I plug the bottom portion back in, the bottom connector back in. Unplug the top connector. Now the top portion of our picture is frozen. The bottom portion is live. Observe what happens when I unplug the LVDS cable. We have no picture at all. If I unplug it, picture will blank. Plug it back in, we get a picture. You see? So this is the main board. These are the, the, the plugs I was unplugging to kind of isolate the problem. When I unplugged this connector here, the top half of the panel was control was lost. When I unplugged this one, the bottom half was, un, was lost. And if I unplug the main LVBS cable over here, connector, we have no control. But the, but the, the TV goes out, the picture goes out. One thing I am going to try is I'm going to try resoldering the LVDS connector here onto the board. I'm just going to try reflowing those connections and see whether that makes any difference at all to the uh, the picture because it seems to be in that area when I tap around there is where it tends to uh, create the biggest dis disturbance. I've already redone the uh, the ground pins here. I've already done the grounds. I'm going to do the other connections here and see whether that makes any difference. Looks like my problem is on my timing controller board. Um, I want to show you something here. I'm just going to put some heat in this area right here with my heat gun. I want you to watch the screen. So as you can see, the picture is distorted. Get the heat gun on. I'm just going to watch my monitor here as I heat this up. As you can see, my severe shaking and distortion of the picture has gone away. As I cool the thing down, it's going to come back again. Try the HDMI input and just see what the picture looks like off of a high definition input on this thing. As you can see, the picture is distorted. I'm just going to stop the thing from playing and see if I can get my see if I can get my menu. Okay. Now we'll heat the thing up again. See that? Picture's uh, looking a lot better. Now I'll just cool it down again. I'm just putting my fingers onto the onto the capacitors here. What I'm touching is I'm touching these electrolytic caps that are on this power supply portion of this board. And as I cool them down, just by putting my thumb on it, just drain the heat away. I guess I could put some frost on there. Here's some frost spray. Maybe I can reflow. This is the one that I showed you that had all the heat, the, all the goop 
from the heat sink um, gel had melted. There we go. It's coming back again, right? There we go. Our pitcher problem is back again. And now once again, heat gone on low. Put a little bit of heat on the board. I'm just trying to localize which part, what, what area of the board I can heat and it'll clear up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolder the LVDS connector and I'll, re I'll touch up the connections on the, these two chips as well. Uh, I've looked at the capacitors uh, as far as ESR goes, I don't see a problem with them. But I'm also going to resolder the, the, the little coils over here. They have external connections where the actual uh, wire coil attaches to the leg. So I'm going to redo those as well. And I may just um, try reflowing these BGA chips here with my uh, heat gun. Just the, the this one and the other one. This is the area that I was heating of the board, this little area here. I was like, this little area of the board is what I was heating. And when I heated this little area of the board here, the picture snapped in. So it's something in here. So I'm going to just try reflowing both of these ones here and uh, resoldering the, uh, the, the, the pins on the regular surface mount ICs and see whether that will make any difference to the set. I've got it localized down to this board so the worst case scenario is we change the board. Okay, the picture's bad. I'm gonna hit this IC here. This is the this is the one that uh, had all the heat sink stuff that dried up and melted and ran down the board you can see here. So Heat gun on there. Picture is bad right now. Picture is good. Frost. Picture is bad. Heat. Picture is good. That quick. It's either, there's a crack under there, under the IC. We'll try reheating this thing with the torch, not the torch, but the heat gun. I'll take it out and we'll just try and reflow this IC. Uh, we'll try it one time. Um, everything else I've looked on the board here, I, I don't see any other problems. Everything's been isolated down to this one chip. I'm going to try and see if I can reflow it with my uh, heat gun. And if that doesn't do it, that board needs to be replaced. Simple as that. So basically what... What I've done is I just took the heat gun and I'm just going to keep it over top of this chip here and we're going to get it good and hot and see if we can reflow the solder underneath it. Obviously what's happened is when the the heat transfer compound on top melted and went away the chip is overheated and it's gotten to the point where it's gotten hot enough to melt the solder and create a connection problem underneath it. So we're just trying to get this thing hot enough to remelt the solder, reflow the solder underneath the chip. And now we'll let it cool for a few minutes and uh, give it one more shot. We know definitely the problem is this IC because I can heat it and the picture clears up and I can cool it and the picture goes bad. So we know the problem is either the chip or the solder connections underneath it. My guess is it's the solder connections underneath it. One of the BGA um, connections has broken, which is, I mean, BGA is a terrible way of mounting parts anyway. Uh, cause a lot of problems with BGA stuff. The uh, TV that's sitting in the background here, that I'm, it's still under test here. This was the same thing. It was a BGA 
uh, chip and I still haven't put the video together for that but you guys will see it at some point that set's still working as you can see it's still working in the background here I run it every day in the, in the shop here and uh, eventually I'm sure it'll go back to its owner but at this point uh, he hasn't been bugging me about it so I'm continuing to test it I'll put this board back in and see whether we got it on this if we did great if not I'm gonna have to break the news to the guy that owns it that he needs a new timing controller well once again we can see that the TV is uh, working and uh, I'm gonna let the thing run here and just see if it'll continue to work and we'll just test this one maybe I got lucky and we got this one fixed like I did with this one this one's been a few weeks and this one's still holding up I'm going to let this thing run for a while and just see whether it holds up or not before I'm going to uh, con consider it a, su a total success we'll see what happens yeah the picture you see there that's just because it, it, it's just a bad uh, uh, over compressed image so that's what that DVD looks like that's what that it's an AVC HD disc so that is what that video looks like because it's been over compressed downloaded off the internet so we'll let it run and see what happens as you can see the menu is perfect so to keep the the uh, chip cool I've got this this is a, a heat sink gel it's gonna cut a piece of this off and basically what we do is we stick it to the top of the chip and then we sandwich the heat sink on top of it it's the same stuff that was uh, it's the same stuff that was on there so that's the stuff there we sandwich it on top of the chip and then sandwich the cage around it and it's the same as this stuff here that's the stuff that it melted and ran down the board I think that's probably why this thing failed in the first place so I'm going to let it run for a while I'm just going to stick this on here because that will at least drain some of the heat away from the chip cool it down a bit and then we'll get the uh, we'll get the shield back on it and uh, put it all back together and test run this thing and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this thing run you know for the weekend anyway belongs to one of my co-workers so I'm not going to see him again until Tuesday so Tuesday I can give him a call and say hey come on down and get your TV if it's still working but we'll keep our fingers crossed that I may have solved this problem so I'm just going to replace the shield cover here and that'll give me my heat sink back on this board as you can see this is the inside of it that's where it makes contact with the heat sink and the other IC makes contact over here so basically this board this cover just fits down over top of the board oh I gotta undo this plug and I do have this set unplugged by the way now just so that you guys aren't freaking out that I'm working on it live uh, I have it unplugged So all it does is that the um, the pressure between the the shield and that heat sink gel presses down on the IC and that that gives it its its thermal transfer pressure. So we'll just remount our screws and then we can power the TV up and I can let the thing run under test for an extended period of the time before I reassemble the set. As you can see perfect picture so it's under test now I'm going to leave it run all night and if it's still working in the morning then I'm going to put the sucker back together but it looks like at this point I've got this TV fixed I don't know how long it's going to last again um, the alternative was to either replace the board or throw the TV out it looks like uh, we may have solved another one and kept another one of these sets out of the landfill at least temporarily and I mean it could go on for ages uh, the last board I fixed using this procedure I actually did it with uh, the halogen lamp and that was geez that was last summer that was six months more than six months ago that I did that repair on my Onkyo uh, sound system my own system and it's still working so we'll take our chance but I can safely say that at this point in time this TV is fixed. Thanks for watching. And there it is. Actually playing some video.